in Soviet times, when education was considered one of the best in the world, Soviet prodigies were an international sensation. However, often their early awakened talent was not a gift, but a real punishment. The girl Naden was born in 1952 in Mongolia, in Ulaanbaatar. Her parents were creative people, her mother was a ballerina, her father was an artist. After the birth of their daughter, the family moved to Moscow. Little Nedia, that was the girl's name for short, watched her father's work from childhood. When she was five years old, she started drawing. Yes, it was so great that the adults were amazed. After all, no one taught her graphics. But Nedia did it masterfully. When she entered the fifth grade, in 1964, the first exhibition of the young artist, organized by the magazine Youth, took place. Her performance was amazing. For example, Resheva made more than 200 illustrations for the novel The Mester and Margarita. Nadia created magnificent drawings dedicated to the life and work of Pushkin, whom she called her favorite poet. Her Pushkiniana was known throughout the Soviet Union. When the Pushkin Museum hosted an exhibition of graphics by 17-year-old Resheva, people stood in line for hours to get inside and see the amazing drawings and illustrations created by Nadia. Unfortunately, the brilliant artist died at the age of 17. It happened in 1969. The girl was about to leave the house, bent down to tie her shoelaces, and a vessel burst due to a congenital brain aneurysm. Older people remember Resheva perfectly. And in 1982, a minor planet was named in her honor. Little Sesha Putra was also an artist. She was born in Poltava and started painting amazing paintings from the age of three. Surprisingly, Sasha came up with the plots for her works herself. She drew animals, parents, acquaintances, and relatives. The girl adored India and painted pictures on the theme of Oriental dances, portrayed the god Shiva. Unfortunately, when Sashenka turned five, she was diagnosed with a terrible diagnosis, acute leukemia. She spent a lot of time in hospitals where doctors fought for her life. The baby suffered from severe pain, but despite this, she worked 10 hours a day, creating unique and very talented paintings. During her short life, Sasha Putria managed to write more than 2,000 works. When the little artist got to heaven, the whole world found out about her. Her solo exhibitions were held in many countries. There were more than a hundred of them in total. Another child with incredible abilities was Pusha Konoplav. In the 80s of the 20th century, he was known all over the world. He was talked about both in the Soviet and foreign mass media. From the age of three, the boy chewed on the most difficult mathematical problems like nuts. When he was five years old, he wanted to learn to play the piano and was able to fulfill his dream without the help of adults. By the age of eight, Pavel already knew physics perfectly, and at 15 he entered university. When Konoplev turned 18, he became a graduate student. Pasha really enjoyed studying, he said he was really excited. Parents rejoiced at the success of their son, who was prophesied a great future. However, the subtle psyche of the genius probably could not withstand constant loads. Problems began, there were outbursts of aggression, constant nervous breakdowns and even suicide attempts. Konoplev was placed in a psychiatric clinic, where they tried to save him with the help of potent drugs. Pasha Konoplev ended his life in a psychiatric hospital at the age of 29. The cause of death was a pulmonary thrombus. Nika Turbina, born in 1970 for Inyalta, was known not only in the Soviet Union, but also abroad. From the age of four, the girl dictated poems to her parents, which, according to her, fell on her head from the sky. When the little POTUS turned nine years old, the first collection of her poems was published. And when Nika turned 12, she received the Venice Golden Lion Award. It was simply incredible. Such a prestigious award was awarded to only one person from the Soviet poets Ekmatova, who at that time was already over 60. Yes, the small and incredibly talented Nick was talked about all over the world. Her poems could be heard on the radio. They were translated into other languages. Programs were filmed about her. Nika's patron was the most famous Yevgeny Yevtushenko, but this did not always continue. The girl grew up, and as she grew older, interest in the prodigy from the Soviet Union decreased. 
Nika, accustomed to admiration and fame since childhood, began to lose heart. She had nervous breakdowns. Later, the girl began to attract drugs and alcohol. According to friends, Nika, while still at school, in high school, became interested in a bohemian lifestyle. She drank a lot, had affairs, left home and did strange things. Turbina tried to commit suicide several times, and at the age of 27, she succeeded. She fell from the balcony and crashed to her death. Although, according to the testimony of witnesses, Nika's death cannot be attributed to suicide. It was most likely an accident. When the daughter of the screenwriter of the Soviet hits The Star of Captivating Happiness and Lomonosov was talked about as a child prodigy, the audience liked it. A talented daughter of a talented dad, whom he teaches himself isn't that wonderful. And only many years later, when her daughter ran away from home, the terrible truth surfaced. In the 80s, the Soviet Union was crazy about geeks. A lot of attention was paid to talented children. Their destinies and careers were closely followed by the press and diligently fanned the hype around them. And officially, they were called indigo children, a term that came from the West. Officially praised as the success of Soviet pedagogical experiments private, of course, order. But in the US there was nothing really private, as it was implied, and the opportunity to conduct such experiments was considered the result of the entire education system that parents went through. In 1981, one of the favorites of the press and the public, six-year-old prodigy Polina Ossetinskaya, began performing on stage. The audience greeted her especially warmly. Everyone liked that Polina was taught by her own father, Oleg Ossetinsky, a screenwriter whom the audience loved for the star of captivating happiness. Oleg was happy to say that he teaches his daughter according to his own unique methodology. True, the result was criticized by professional musicians. They said that the girl greatly simplifies the pieces, skips notes. Besides, intense playing can cripple her incorrectly placed hands, but these objections were drowned in praise and applause. In 1988, the Soviet Union was shocked by the news. A 13-year-old piano prodigy ran away from her father. She told reporters that she was beaten, bullied and demanded the impossible from her. Her hands were already in such a state that it was unclear whether she would ever become a professional pianist. No, physiologically they were normal. But due to the load and incorrect staging, they were unable to accurately reproduce the correct movements necessary for a professional game. In 2006, an adult Ossetinskaya wrote a book about her childhood, and the details in it were scarier than those revealed by the Soviet press. Just because Polina then found it impossible to say about some things. The book is called Goodbye, Sadness. It instantly became a bestseller. One could say that she completely destroyed the relationship between father and daughter, but at that time there was no other way out. This book begins with a terrible memory, but not from the worst. Twelve-year-old Paulina, with a figure that had already begun to form, came out to the guests of her father, an intelligent man in a smart dress. She was the little hostess of the evening, pouring tea for everyone. Suddenly her father demanded that she play Chopin. Faster, even faster. The girl complained that her arm hurt. Then the father tore the dress on the girl, whose breasts were already forming, struck several random blows, threw her head against the radiator. Naked, in only his underpants, he dragged her from the battery back to the piano and forced her to play again. Not a single intelligent, sophisticated guest, not one of the five men said a word to her father. Everyone continued to drink tea. The piano keys were covered in red, smeared spots. This incident was one of the events that pushed the girl to escape from home. But this was not the first act of harassment. Oleg Ossetinsky boasted of some special method of double stress, which turned his unremarkable daughter into a child prodigy. But no one asked what exactly the method with this name is and whether stress is safe for the child. One of Polina's earliest memories is of how Dad stole her from Mom again. Her parents divorced when she was little. They took turns stealing and hiding the girl. In the end, as you know, she stayed with her father. But then no one knew that it would mean years of persecution. Before Paulina, Oleg already had two daughters. One of them ran away from home after another scandal, however. In fact, only the father himself was scandalizing. On the same day, on the day of the departure of the schoolgirl's daughter, Oleg brought Paulina's future mother, his actually sixth wife, to live with him. Why wives and daughters ran away from him? She did not ask herself then. Music was constantly playing in their house, and it is not surprising that Paulina was sent to music school at the age of five. She had absolute hearing. 
However, the teacher's teaching methods did not like Paulina's dead so much that one day he went to talk to her, and the teacher was hospitalized with a heart attack, and the father from that moment undertook to teach Pauline himself. He was not a great pianist, but he considered it unnecessary for teaching. To grow a super daughter, first of all, Oleg almost stopped feeding her. The girl's breakfast often consisted of water acidified with vinegar and several vitamins. For lunch, she could eat some cheese with honey or an ender cooked entree coat but in proud solitude. A glass of kaffir could serve as dinner. At school, the girl fainted from hunger, but no one was particularly confused. In addition, her father set a time limit for eating, exactly two minutes. Everything that Bolina did not have time to swallow at that time was declared superfluous. In general, the father actually starved the girl. Fortunately, Oleg from an early age had a habit of taking her to a restaurant and sitting there all night. This did not give the opportunity to sleep, but you could always have a snack in silence. I must say, Pauline's brother was fed even less. He made him a boxing champion, and therefore, according to her father, the boy had to go through even more severe trials. Oleg was looking for music teachers for his daughter and very strong ones, but in the end it all came down to the fact that the teachers did not like the way their father talked to them. In any case, the girl went to them for a show, otherwise it was impossible to organize concerts. In fact, her music course was a multi-hour home workout with a double load on an empty stomach. Music warm-up to improve posture and relax your hands music again. The schedule was scheduled by the minute, and it practically did not include meals. The requirements for Paulina's game were strict. It was assumed that complex music would be played faster and faster, much faster than it was intended by the composers just for training. The scores were not designed for the short fingers of children. However, it was impossible to object her father beat her up for it. Paulina, taking advantage of her father's musical illiteracy, adapted to skip some notes and arrange the music in her own way, passing the notes so that the overall harmony was preserved and the fingers reached. At some point, under the pretext of the need to unload the nervous system of the girl, the father added loads to her. Physical. Paulina was forced to run several kilometers a day, skate and dance. However, she liked to dance, but running on an empty stomach was a real torment. Interestingly, in those years, Paulina's favorite reread book was Prisoners of Auschwitz. One day, at the request of her father, the girl stayed overnight with her next teacher, Vera Gornosteva. She didn't look very neat, and her daughter decided to bathe and wash her clothes. As soon as Paulina undressed, the woman almost felt sick. The girl looked terribly dirty, covered with streaks. But, no matter how these stains were scraped off, they did not wash off. They were blackened bruises. Paulina was almost completely covered in them under her clothes. Again, this discovery had no consequences. It was almost impossible to complain to my mother. Paulina was afraid that by then even the connection that they had managed to establish would no longer exist. The girl secretly from her father called her mother from an evening run from a vending machine. In addition, her mother got a job at the music school where Paulina studied in order to see her more often. However, she had to work very hard, and the meetings were short. The usual beatings and starvation did not seem enough to Oleg, as well as endless insults to his daughter. He put the girl in front of the wall and took a tennis racket and a ball. After that, he began to launch the ball at Paulina with terrible speed, aiming at her face or chest. Dodged well done. If she didn't dodge, she was to blame. She punished herself. Dad just lets go of the ball. Don't expose yourself. Dad's punch was served well. However, one of the blows saved Paulina's life. The father missed a serious inflammation in his daughter's ear. When it became already strong, in a rage, he put her head on the bench. The inflammation burst, blood gushed out, diluted with pus. Her father went to watch football. An unknown woman called an ambulance. The doctors said that if she hadn't hit the bench, she would have died in a few days. There would be an outpouring into the brain. The woman who witnessed the blow did not tell anyone that her father did it. Naturally, the pleasure of the fame of her daughter, who constantly performed, was not limited to one thing. Every concert brought money, and a lot of it. Oleg was not greedy with this money he got drunk himself and treated other creative personalities. There was a special chic in having a drink with someone relatively famous. Meanwhile, Paulina went out to perform in torn sweatpants. There was no time to sew up. Dad found it unnecessary to buy new ones. But that's not the only advantage he's got. To those who were delighted with Paulina's fame, he offered to teach their daughter according to his own methodology. Only, of course, he will have to drag Paulina to concerts. The girl has a busy schedule then, in the dark of the room, 
Paulina listened to her father raping another teenage girl. The girls were crying and, no consequences, Oleg was able to intimidate, push, press, deprive the child of will. Paulina herself was too afraid of him and too afraid to be alone with him to warn the girls and their parents. After many years, she will ask for forgiveness from these girls. But what is she to blame for, a small child next to a terrible adult criminal? And outwardly everything continued to be perfect. In each interview, the girl talked about the incredible unity with her father and the more convincing, the stronger the taste of blood in her mouth was felt on her lips, wounded by teeth after hitting them with a man's hand. On stage, she smiled a practice smile. She sat down at the piano and immediately a smile appeared, no matter what she played. The news of the escape, when Paulina reached the age that seemed to interest her father in the most frightening way, came as a shock to the whole country. Many had long suspected that something was wrong and some people knew specifically, but were silent. When mom came to school for documents, the director, handing her an absolutely empty report card of her daughter, recommended her to go there for any grades and congratulated her. By that time, Paulina already had two dozen chronic diseases, including stomach, vascular and heart problems. Due to the fact that shortly before the escape she was hospitalized with a painful condition, her father began to feed her and according to the schedule. But the stomach was still badly damaged. The girl also had thoughts of suicide for a long time. It was when Paulina told about them that her next teacher suggested running away. Together with mom, a plan was developed. It wasn't easy to do it, but they did it. The woman and the girl had to look for a place to hide. Her father had many friends who believed in every word he said. A familiar priest helped he saddled them in the village with her mother. From there they wrote a statement to the police. Of course, not everything was indicated there. The rapes of other girls were hidden behind the vague word debauchery. Paulina was helped by the informational support of journalist Alexander Nevzorov. The pianist's career was now under threat. Paulina's hands were terribly damaged even damaged by overload. Her psychological state was also severe, but a talented teacher got the better of her, and today Paulina has become a famous pianist without tricks. Subsequently, she developed a personal life. Paulina's father has given numerous interviews in which he accuses her of slander and says that she owes her adult career to how effectively he worked with her as a child. He emigrated to the USA and there, using his daughter's name, at first also tried to teach girls. Nothing came of it. One can only hope that he did not prepare them like the girls he took with Paulina on tour. He died in the fall of 2020. Alas, there are those who use her biography as an excuse for cruelty to children.